Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. History, despite our wanting it to be so simple, is not simple. There are often at least three sides to a story. His side, her side, and the truth. But often, there are multiple sides. Think about it. Even the Gospels, we have four communities. Four communities telling the story about the same man, but in different ways. Looking at the story from Genesis, which we just simply do not have enough time to get into this morning, even that story is not simply black and white letters on the page. It is a story that is repeated so often in the services of our Jewish brothers and sisters, and yet for us it is quite disturbing, to say the least. It's complex. This weekend was a time of historic change for this state. As many of you know, the legislature in Jackson has voted as of yesterday to suspend the rules in both houses so that they may introduce a bill to take down the current flag. The current state flag that bears the symbol Battlefield system, that is, of the Army of Northern Virginia. Now, it would seem that this is a simple matter. There was a war, one side won, one side lost, and so what should remain is the winner, correct? I mean, to the victor go the spoils. But it's not that simple. Me personally, on both sides of my family, we can't find anyone who was here before 1880. Uh, we had uh, no one that we know of in the North or the Southern armies. And so we have no ownership of this current uh, uh, battle. I should say historic, deep uh, feeling. And yet, I have walked uh, the fields of Gettysburg. I've been to the Bloody Angle. I've been to Shiloh. And I've seen places where brother killed brother in astounding numbers for the time. Why do you suppose we decided that it was time to change the banner that flies above our capital. Once again, there are many reasons. And as we look at different options that will be presented, we'll have to find a flag that writes a new history. But don't forget, don't forget as you look back that this was not issue despite how black and white it may seem. For history, 
history is rarely given to us in black and white. All that being said, I do think that a new banner that represents all of us will feed into the idea of our Mississippi is the hospitality state. And hospitality is exactly what today's gospel is about. Now, it doesn't seem like that at first, but we are actually continuing that discourse from last week when Jesus seemed so angry and ready to split up every family. Why? Because the instructions that he was giving about being a disciple of his, they weren't black and white. They involved a lot of being separated, being cut off from family, brother against brother. But this week, Jesus takes a whole different turn, as he so often does in his sermons. He says, oh, and by the way, you don't get to choose who supports you. You don't get to choose who converts. You don't get to choose who believes. For if anyone comes to you and does good to you, they will not lose their reward. <clears throat> and if anyone comes and does something in your name, in the name of a disciple, they shall not lose their reward. And even if someone gives you a cold cup of water, they have given unto you, and therefore given unto me, and therefore given unto the Father who has sent me. Nobody but me, the Father, and the Holy Ghost gets to say who's in and who's out. Which is almost as hard to hear as last week's gospel, isn't it? Now, wait a minute. I'm giving up all my family. I'm giving up what I know to follow you. You're telling me we can't even have a few rules about who can be in the club? Jesus said, got it right. Jesus is talking about accepting the hospitality that others want to give unto the disciples and therefore give unto Jesus himself. You know, we can change all the laws we want to. We can change all the banners and flags that we want to. We can get rid of songs and other things. But to take on that radical hospitality that Jesus offers, it is so simple, but it's not easy. Extending hospitality even to those whom we disagree with. And can we be honest? Who we just really don't like it. If you want to know the truth, it's a radical call. Jesus loves everybody. Do you think he enjoyed all the dinners he went to? <laughs> but that's not the call, is it? The call is share with you that it's been hard, or at least uh, challenging, you have to get creative in ways to be hospitable for myself and to y'all as your priest in charge under special circumstances. It's these special circumstances that are getting in the way. The virus, uh, as it were, and we're taking proper measures all are here this morning. But it's prevented me from doing what I wanted to do. And that was, to be honest, to do some southern hospitality. I wanted to go 
out to eat with you and have a cup of coffee and find out more about who you are. And along the way, you'll probably find out a little bit more about me. And so it's been frustrating in an entirely different type of way. Thankfully, Wendy in the church office comes in and gives me a good pep talk. It's been going in here. Says there are ways to reach out. And I've heard some great stories from y'all about uh, neighbors having, uh, whether it be morning coffee or an evening cocktail, across the fence, social distancing, but still finding a way to live in hospitality and relationship. Those stories are encouraging. And I think therein lies the answer for us as to what this gospel is telling us today. It's to find creative ways to be hospitable to all of those that we meet. Maybe we have a neighbor who needs groceries picked up. Maybe we have someone who be quite honest, just needs a call on the phone because you know, we know nobody else is calling them. There's someone, I'm guessing, that's popping into your head or something that you, I know it's popping into mine, or, or I, can be hospitable to. And it's as simple, it's as simple as if you were reaching out and giving to them a cold cup of water. Or a cold cup of water when you are so thirsty is so refreshing. Jesus Christ has given that hospitality and that refreshment to us. So friends, let us take that refreshment and Christ's love to others.